Uh, this story is called um, uh, Edison Jr. Tales of Terror. Uh, I, I recently found out that the place where I went to junior high school uh, has been bulldozed. Um, and it, it just made me remember a lot of stuff that happened a long time ago. Uh, the rumor when, when I was a boy was that uh, teachers who, who got assigned to Edison Jr. were bad teachers. They, they were, uh, the rest of the uh, system uh, would not tolerate them, and so they were assigned uh, to Edison Jr. And I, I don't know if that was true, but I, I think if you went there, you kind of thought maybe it was uh, true. Uh, and nowadays, people worry a lot about bullying, uh, haters, you know, like these are like these are bad things, bad people. Uh, no one seemed to think that at, at my junior high. Uh, there were lots of bullies. Uh, there were lots of haters. Uh, each and every day, violent, uh, scary things uh, happened. And often, uh, the worst offenders were the teachers. Um, Sometimes I, I tell my kids uh, stories. They, they don't even believe. They think oh, it's impossible. Well, for example, we all had uh, we had swimming. There was a swimming pool uh, at my junior high, and we all had to go swimming. Uh, I think once a week we went swimming, swimming class. It was all boys. Uh, our, our, our swimming teacher was a coach, uh, Coach D. Uh, and uh, we, we swam naked. Uh, we were not allowed to wear swimming trunks. Uh, everybody had to, had to swim uh, naked. And uh, Coach D would be, uh, you know, wearing his, uh, like, gym trunks and his uh, T-shirt, kind of big brick of a guy. And he'd, he'd, stick, his, uh, he'd stick his fingers in the, in the belt of his uh, trunks, I, I remember. And had a, had a little metal whistle. He'd whistle at us and yell at us a lot, you know. Uh, uh, we, we didn't even own swimming, swimming trunks. Uh, um, the girls, I heard uh, that they were actually, they wore these kind of ratty uh, one-piece uh, suits that belonged to the school and got washed, uh, you know, over and over and over until they were practically falling apart. Um, uh, boys, uh, typically, uh, we, did wear, we did wear gym clothes when we were in the gym. And uh, you had to wear like, uh, like, they were like gray trunks, little blue stripes on them. And you had to wear a jock strap and a t-shirt, uh, tennis shoes, and white socks. Had to be white socks. And uh, the boy, it was typical. We would never wash anything. Uh, we, we they, the clothes would just get yellow. They would just, they would be stinky yellow clothes. We were sort of proud of these horrible clothes. Um, usually by by around uh, Christmas time, uh, Coach D would get. He'd just explode one day and tell us we were all filthy bums, and we all had to take our stuff home. And when we came back from break, it better be clean. And then there would be an, an inspection, the first, the first gym class. Everybody would have to have like a clean T-shirt. But that'd be the end of it. You know, after that, we would just, you know, they would just get dirtier and dirtier and sweatier and sweatier. Uh, Coach D was terrifying, a very gruff voice. I uh, got mad a lot, yelled at us a lot. Uh, I, I once saw him, uh, uh, he caught a guy, heard that a guy was, uh, you know, in our, our clothes would be hung up in the locker room. And this guy was going through the pockets trying to steal money out of wallets. And he grabbed this guy and he slammed him in the wall, into the wall. And he sl kept slamming him into the wall until the guy totally confessed uh, that, that he did it. That, that's how law enforcement was accomplished by, uh, by Coach, uh, Coach D. Uh, I remember one time uh, there was a skinny kid. Uh, he didn't seem able to learn how to swim. And uh, Coach D makes him go out on the, on the diving board. He's on, he's on the end of the diving board and he's just trembling and he's crying and we're all standing around and the coach is telling him he has to jump in and the kid's terrified he's going to drown. And uh, finally Coach D gets uh, disgusted and he tells him, you know, you can come back. You make me sick. You know, you make me sick. I, I still remember that. One time uh, there was another big uh, kind of a kind of a fat kid and he, and he couldn't swim and uh, the coach just shoved him into the deep end. So and he just the kid just sinks down to the bottom and he's like standing down there. I, I didn't even know this was physically possible. He's just standing and we're all going, oh, my God, he's and the coach. D is, don't worry. Don't worry. He'll, he'll come up. Oh, he's got to move his arms. He'll come up. And the guy, he's just standing down there. You know, bubbles are dri dri drifting up, and we're all freaking out. And finally, uh, one kid, a football player. If you were a football player, player you were privileged. Uh, coach D would, uh, he might treat you to sarca sarcasm or something like that. But, you know, he's never going to do anything worse than that if you're a football player. And so the guy gets a, gets a he, he jumps in there, and he, you know, saves, saves the guy. I'm pretty sure the Coach D would have let the guy stand down there until he drowned. Uh, you know, before he ever did anything about it. Um, 
uh, we all uh, the showers we all took showers together uh you know everybody uh, we all went through puberty we all knew when anybody was going uh, through uh, oh my god pubic hair you know uh, that was very common uh, but, yeah, football players would pee on people in in the locker you had to take a shower real fast for fear something horrible would happen to you in the, in the showers there were these big uh, Oh, like bowls on the floor of uh, powder, I, I, maybe talcum powder or something like that. And the, and the football players would like grab naked, wet guys, you know, you know, skinny bookworms like me and put you in the in the talcum powder. Sometimes they'd wait until you were dressed and then do it. So you'd have to go to your classes and you'd have this white, white crap all over all over your clothes. Uh, once a, once uh, once a year, we would have dancing class, uh, and that was kind of an interesting class. The boys gym class and the girls gym class would be combined on on for those dancing classes then there'd be several of these in a row and all the girls would be on one side and all the boys would be on on the other side and uh, all the couples would kind of figure it out like you know like the like the like the cool football player would be never the first guy in line and the cool cheerleader that he was going with would be the first one and then the you know there would be the second best football player and the you know the second coolest cheerleader and you know, until until you ran out of couples. I mean, a lot of us we we were we didn't really have girlfriends. So we, we, so then in the back end of the line, you just have a bunch of guys, no girlfriends. And then in the back end of the girls' line, it'd be a bunch of girls with no boyfriends. So of course, you know, a lot of those uh, we were not the best looking people. So a lot of boys, uh, there were more boys than girls. It seemed like so if you got back far enough, you didn't have to dance with any girl. But otherwise, you'd get the weirdest girls. You know, the fattest girls, funniest looking girls, and so there's always a lot of shoving, and you know, as boys trying to avoid having to dance with these uh, more homely girls, and the coach would get mad and yell at us, you know, and uh, uh, so finally, you know, we're all going up there, and and one of my friends, he he had tried to avoid this one fat girl by pushing me ahead of him, but it turned out he didn't count right, and he wound up with the girl in, instead of me, and they were doing this, I don't know, this kind of crazy dance where you hook arms and twirl around and everything, and. Uh, that fat girl fell on him. I, I'm not sure what happened. She fell right on top of him and broke his leg in two places. A uh, freak accident, I, I'm sure. It must have been humiliating for her and, of course, pain painful for him. Nothing really uh, super traumatic happened to me. I saw a lot of crazy, uh, scary things, but nothing too scary actually happened to me in, in that junior high. Except one time I did, I did uh, one of my teachers put my head in a vice. Um, is my homeroom. My homeroom was in a shop class, and uh, uh, there were there were I, we we would sit at these big wooden tables, and on the corners, on two of the corners of the tables were uh, vices. You know, like you could put wood in there, and I don't know, saw and glue them, and th things like that. And uh, one one day, I I spun I spun the vice open, and uh, I put I had gum, and I put my gum in the vice, and I closed. Close the vice, and I had no, uh, you know, no people at my table. Well, there's like four of us: two girls and two guys, and they they saw me do this, and um, I'm probably trying to impress the girls by how wild and crazy I am. Anyway, I tell you the truth, I just totally forgot about it. Well, of course, uh, pretty soon, I think by the second period, they found out that there was gum in that vice. So the coach thought uh, that, or not the coach, uh, that, that was taught by a guy named, uh, his name was Gowan, Mr. Gowan. Mr. Gowan found out by about the second period that there was gum in the vice. So he thought somebody in the first period, his first period of class, must have done it. So the next day, he cross-examines everybody, and they're all, no, man, we didn't, no, we didn't use the vices, we, no, we went, no, we're not stupid, you know, we wouldn't do something like that. So he finally believes them, and he decides it must be somebody in his home room, you know. So the next day, a couple days, and I mean, we've all completely forgotten about this whole thing. And uh, he marches up to us in home room, and, and there's one guy at my table named Larry. And Larry, he's much wilder. He's got like this greasy black pompadour, and I uh, think got like tattoos. So you know, he's more like I don't know, 14 years old, and he's already got tattoos. And uh, boy, the, the Mr. Gowan is absolutely sure Larry did it, and he's got a hold of him, and he's shaking him, you know. And I, I fess up, you know. I, I leave him alone. He didn't do it. I did it. I did it. You know, this is shocking to Mr. Gowan because he thinks of me as one of the brainy kids, and you know, I would never. He can't believe it, you know. So he, what he does is he he uh, he spins open that vice. The gum is still in it, and the gum it just kind of stretches between the between the two sides of the vice like a like a suspension bridge 
and he grabs me by the back of the neck and he pushes my head slowly down into the gum. So the gum stretches out and now, now the vice is, is, is like this. And then he, he slowly uh, starts uh, spinning the vice so that so it kind of starts closing in on my head. And he says, uh, so tell the class, Mr. Arms, do you think you will ever put gum in a vice again? No, 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 no. You know, I swear on my mother's soul, I will never, never. You know, and, uh, to this day, I have not put any more gum in a vice. You know, the bad old days. I don't miss them.